guys welcome to science learning gateway i hope you all are doing good so in this tutorial we are going to discuss class 10th science chapter number 5 periodic classification of element and in this chapter we are going to revise this chapter in a very simple way so that we can complete the chapter in less time like this we are going to start uh, the revision from all the lessons in one shot means in one tutorial only we are going to cover the full chapter so that it will be helpful for you also during the exam to prepare for it and you can score a good marks so let's start with the lesson i have already uploaded a video for chapter number five periodic classification of element in that i have uh, explained the chapter in detail the notes are covered from your ncrt science textbook you can check that in the playlist of class 10 so let's start the revision from chapter number five periodic classification of elements as you all know there are 118 elements in the periodic table correct how many elements are there there are 118 elements out of 118 elements 98 elements are naturally occurring but uh, what was the need of classification that time as in this chapter what we have to read periodic classification of element so what was the need of classification see the need of classification is that there are so many elements correct 118 elements it's not property it's uh, not possible for us or even for the scientists to read the properties of each and every in elements individually that's why they ha they are grouped according to their similarities and dissimilarities that's why classification was needed what what was the basis for classification elements with similar prop similar and uh, similar chemical and physical properties are grouped in one group one period and according to that the uh, elements were classified in the periodic table that was the basis for classification as you uh, when you go to the shops you can see over there the different varieties of soaps are there soaps and detergents are there even they will separate the bathing soaps they will separate the cleaning soaps in different different shelves so you can easily pick up whatever you need like that only in periodic table the elements are grouped according to their similarities and differences so that if uh, one element in a particular group we will read we can know about the properties of the other elements also so that was the basis for classification of elements you can see in this periodic table there are so many elements the elements which are present on the left hand side of the periodic table they are known as metals metals are present on the left hand side of the periodic table a zigzag line which you can see over there a zigzag line which you can see over there the green color line these are the metalloids what are metalloids metalloids are those elements which have some properties of metals and some properties of non-metals examples of metalloids you can write boron silicon germanium arsenic antimony two three examples if you learn for metalloids it will be enough for you generally questions are asked from this section also what are metalloids give example so you can write metalloids are those elements which have some properties of metals and some properties of non-metals example boron silicon germanium to the to the right of the metalloids we have non-metals non-metals so you can easily remember that metals are present on the left hand side of the periodic table and metals are present on the right hand side of the periodic table a zigzag line separates metals from the non-metals and they are called metalloids they are called metalloids over there you can see at the bottom lanthanides and actinides are separated they have been given a different place in the periodic table and in total we have 18 groups 18 groups are present over there and 7 periods are there the vertical columns which you can see over there they are called groups and horizontal rows which you can see over there these are called periods so how many groups are there 18 groups are there and 7 periods are there in the periodic table this is called modern periodic table so let's start with our discussion see different scientists were there they have given their views for the periodic table means how elements are classified and according to that the first of all we'll read about Daubner's triad when elements were arranged in order when elements were arranged in order of increasing atomic masses this is very important that according to Daubner the elements were arranged according to according to their increasing atomic masses groups of three elements three elements known as triads. Tri means three so three elements were arranged according to 
to their increasing atomic masses sim having similar chemical properties are obtained when uh, what dobnier said that when he arranged three elements uh in the on in the order of increasing atomic masses three elements were arranged okay and all of them they were having similar chemical properties and what he concluded next that the atomic mass of the middle element was roughly the atomic mass of the average of the other two element suppose you have three elements a b and c so the if you take the average of the atomic masses of a plus c the atomic mass which will be obtained will be roughly equal to the atomic mass of the element b for example over there you can see three triads are there lithium sodium and potassium so if you add the atomic mass of lithium and potassium and you will take the average you will get the atomic mass of sodium that is 23 so this was the concept of dobnier's triad what he did dobnier arranged three elements in the order of increasing atomic masses and he found that the atomic mass of the middle element was the was the average of the atomic mass of the other two elements now there were some limitations also at dobnier's triad so what was the limitation the first limitation was only three triads were recognized from the from the elements known at that time that time very less elements were known and in that too also dobnier has has found only three triads the first triad was of lithium sodium potassium the second triad was of calcium strontium and barium and the third triad which he identified was of chlorine bromine and iodine only these elements were known at that time only nine elements he got he um he studied the properties about these elements only the other elements he couldn't he could, couldn't do anything for the other elements now the second limitation was he fails to arrange the all the known elements in the form of triads even having similar properties means the elements which were known at that time also he could not arrange those element in the form of triad he could not study their properties also only these elements only these elements he studied and he has given his ideas about these elements now after dobnier's triad then again a new scientist came up with his ideas and the name of that scientist was newland octaves so according to newland law of octaves when elements were placed in order of increasing atomic masses he also placed the ele elements on the basis of increasing atomic masses he arranged them on the basis of increasing atomic masses the physical and chemical properties of every eighth element are repetition of the properties of the first element suppose we have eight elements a b c d e f g h so this is the eighth element the property of eighth element will be similar to the property of the first element means the properties of a and h will be similar so according to newland's law of octaves he arranged the elements on increasing atomic masses and the property of the first element was similar to the property of the eighth element this was his concept about the elements after that he compared this to the octaves found in music and called it the law of octaves means uh, you have heard about the uh, means about the musical notes sa re ga ma pa da ni sa over there the eighth eighth to uh, music eighth uh, tune will be similar to the first one so he he has observed the same thing when he arranged the elements that the first element is having similar properties of the eighth of the eighth element so what he well, uh, for example the properties of lithium was similar to that of property of the sodium lithium atomic number 3 is having similar property with the element sodium atomic number 11 their properties are similar to each other now after uh, going through this many limitations were also there in newland's law of octaves so let's have a look, quick look on the limitations of newland's law of octaves it was applicable only up to cal calcium only for lighter elements means newland's law of octaves can be applied to the element calcium not more than that only till calcium only for the lighter elements it is applicable second one according to newland's only 56 elements existed in nature and no more elements could be discovered in the future what he said that only 56 elements are there in nature and after 56 elements no new elements can cannot be discovered but now we know that there are 118 elements so this was also one of the failure of newland's law of octaves but later on several new elements were discovered whose properties did not fit into law of octaves many elements were discovered after that also and their properties was uh, uh, was not fitting in the newland's law of octaves next one newland uh, 
adjusted two elements in the same slot example cobalt and nickel are in the same slot and these are placed in the same column as fluorine chlorine bromine which have very different properties than these elements okay one more mistake what he did is that that cobalt and nickel he placed these elements in the same slot and in the same column along with the halogens fluorine chlorine chlorine bromine but we know that the co the properties of cobalt and nic nickel are completely different from the halogens fluorine chlorine and bromine so this is also one of the limitation of newland's law of octaves now after newland's law of octave came the third one third scientist and his name was mendeleev's so now we will be reading about mendeleev's periodic table according to mendeleev's when elements were arranged in order of increasing atomic masses he also arranged the element on the basis of increasing atomic masses masses the elements with similar properties occur at regular intervals what he said that when he arranged the elements on the basis of increasing atomic masses the elements with similar properties occur at regular intervals means some properties will be similar among the elements the properties of elements are periodic function of their atomic masses and this is the law this was a statement which was given by mendeleev the properties of elements are periodic function of their atomic masses mendeleev's periodic table is based on chemical properties of elements it contains six periods and eight groups okay when he arranged the elements he arranged the elements on what basis on the basis of increasing atomic masses and according to him how many periods were there six periods are there and eight groups were there merits of mendeleev's periodic table now this mendeleev's periodic table it is having some merits also and some demerits also so let us read about the merits first some gaps were left for the undiscovered elements like gallium scandium and germanium when he prepared mendeleev's periodic table he left some spaces for the undiscovered element like gallium scandium and germanium it predicted the properties of several undiscovered element on the basis of their position in the table okay many elements were not discovered at, at that time but he predict he predicted their properties on the position he left in the table noble gases could accommodate in the mendeleev periodic table without disturbing the periodic table after discovery noble gases were not discovered at that time but they can easily fit into the in the mendeleev's periodic table without disturbing the other elements now we will have a look on the limitations of mendeleev's periodic classification position of hydrogen atom was not correct means hydrogen has not got the proper position in mendeleev's periodic table position of isotopes were not decided example chlorine 35 and chlorine 37 their position was also not decided at that time position of some elements with lower atomic masses before before with higher atomic masses see over there you can see nickel is having atomic mass of 58.7 and cobalt is having atomic mass of 58.9 but then also the nickel was uh, placed first and cobalt was placed less but uh, after that but uh, mendeleev said that atomic uh, that elements were arranged in the order of increasing atomic bases, masses but uh, this concept was not clear for him so this was one of the limitation which was faced by mendeleev's now after mendeleev's periodic table we have to read about modern periodic table the periodic table which we are using these days it is modern periodic table in 1913 henry moseley showed that atomic number z of of an element is a more fundamental property than its atomic masses what henry moseley said that the elements uh, can be arranged according to their atomic number and it is also important property as compared to atomic masses we represent atomic number with z and atomic mass with a so according to henry moseley atomic number is the more is more fundamental property than atomic masses modern periodic law this is also one of the important question which can come for your exam state modern periodic law so what you will write over there that it states that pro properties of elements are periodic function of their atomic number properties of elements are periodic function of their atomic number but in mendeleev's periodic table what we have read properties of elements are periodic function of their atomic masses just over there you have to 
you have to add atomic number now what is atomic number atomic number is represented with a letter capital z and is equal to number of proton present in the nucleus of an atom of an element how many new how many protons are present in the nucleus that is called your atomic number and in an atom always number of proton is equal to number of electrons so atomic number z it can also be equal to number of electrons all the limitations of mendeleev periodic table disappear after the discovery of modern periodic table the limitations which we have read in mendeleev periodic table they disappear now we don't have any limitations which we can see in modern periodic table now first of all we will reading we will be reading about position of elements in the periodic table okay so in modern periodic table how many vertical columns we have we have 18 vertical columns and they are called groups and how many periods are there there are seven horizontal rows and they are known as the periods elements with same number of valence electrons are placed in the same group means we have 18 groups so in 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 every particular group the the elements which are present they will have the same valence electron for example in group number one whatever elements they are they will have the same valence electron valence electron means outermost electron the electrons which are present in the outermost shell so all the elements will have one valence electron the elements which are present in group number two they will have two valence electrons for example you can see the electronic configuration of chlorine chlorine is having atomic number 17 if we write its electronic configuration it is 2 8 and 7 so this chlorine is present in group number 17 okay and fluorine uh, if you take the example of fluorine 2 comma 7 these all elements have seven valence electron electron in their in their last shell in the outermost shell and they all are present in group number 17 halogens number of shell increase as we go down the group when we move from top to bottom in a group number of shells increases and hence atomic size of the elements will also increase but when we move in a period what will happen the atomic size of the elements decreases that time so remember that when when you go from top to bottom in a group atomic size of the element increases and increases and what is the reason number of shells increases but when we move from from left to right in a period atomic size decreases elements with same number of occupied shells are placed in same period yes now how we can predict the num uh, that which element is present in which period suppose uh, if all the elements are, suppose an element is having two shells k and l so it is present in the second period suppose an element will have only one shell that is k shell so that element will be present in the first period so number of shells tells you about the period of the element suppose the element is having three shells k l and m so this element will be present present in the third shell suppose the sodium magnesium aluminium silicon phosphorus sulfur chlorine and argon they are all they all are having three shells k l and m so these elements are pre are present in the third period because they are they have three shells they have three shells in their atom maximum number of electrons that can be filled in a shell is given by 2n square okay now one rule is there by which we can predict that in one shell how many electrons can be present and that formula is 2n square where n is the number of electrons suppose we want to fill the electrons in the k shell for k shell we take n is equal to 1 we will apply the formula 2 into 1 square it will be equal to 2 so only 2 electrons can be present in k shell not more than that for l the value of n is 2 we will apply this formula 2 into 2 square 2 into 4 is equal to 8 so in l shell 8 electrons can be present not more than that so on this basis you can find the number of electrons present in each of the shell okay so for uh, for your just for your knowledge example i have also provided over there that in k shell the value of n is equal to 1 2 n square formula you will apply and you can see that two elements can be present in the first shell so in first period how many elements are present only two elements are present in the first period now if we take the example of l shell l shell eight electrons are present okay in l shell always eight electrons will be present so in uh, second period how many elements are present eight elements will be present so accordingly you can predict that in one period how many elements are present Position of an element in the periodic table tell us about chemical reactivity. Valence electron det determines the kind and number of bonds formed by the elements. 
valence electron they play a very important role for the elements its properties the, the properties of the elements depends on its valence electrons correct now the most important topic which we are going to discuss now is trends in the modern periodic table from here lots of questions are asked on the basis of reasoning questions application based questions are asked from here the first trend which we will reading about is the valency so what is valency valency is the combining capacity of an element we have read that one line definition the combining capacity of an element is called its valency the valency of element is determined the number determined by the number of valence electrons present in the outermost shell of its atom how many valence electrons are present in the outermost shell or in the valence shell that will give you the valency of the element and the definition is the combining capacity of an element is known as its valency correct suppose let us take an example of sodium atomic number 11 if we write its electronic configuration it's 2 8 and 1 one electron is present in the outermost shell so what is the valency of the sodium it is equal to 1 okay like that for magnesium atomic number is 12 electronic configuration configuration is 2 8 2 2 two electron in the outermost shell the valency of magnesium is 2 So from the outermost electron or from the valence electron, you can easily tell about the valency of the element. Now, what is the trend of valency in the period? On moving from left to right in a period, the valency first increases from one to four and then decreases to zero. So when you move in a period, we are taking the example of third period elements. From one to four, the valency will increase, and after that, again it will decrease to zero. Okay, so valency will first increase from from 1 to 4 and after that it decreases to 0 what is the trend in a group on moving from top to bottom in a group the valency remains the same because number of valence electrons remains the same so in a group no no changes will be there in the valency because in a group the number of valence electron is same suppose in group number 1 the number of valence electron is 1 so the valency of all the elements which are present in group number 1 will be same that is 1 only but remember that in a period the valency first increases from 1 to 4 and then it decreases to 0 next we talk about atomic size so what is atomic size it is the radius of an atom it refers to the radius of an atom it is the distance between the center of the nucleus and the outermost shell of an isolated atom suppose this is the nucleus and these are the shells suppose this is the outermost shell so the distance between the nucleus and the last shell is called the atomic size is called the atomic size of that element so what is its trend in the period on moving from left to right in a period atomic size decreases and what is the reason because of the nuclear charge nuclear charge increases and atomic size decreases the attraction of the nucleus for, uh, for the attraction of the electron of the nucleus for the electrons it will increase and because of that the nuclear charge will increase and the atomic size will decrease now atomic size of noble gases is corris in corresponding period is largest due to the presence of fully filled electronic configuration if we talk about noble gases they have the largest atomic size why because the outermost shell is completely filled they are stable in a group on moving from top to bottom atomic size increases why because number of shells increases if uh on moving from left to right in each and every element one one shell will increase and their atomic size will increase that is the reason that when we move from top to bottom in a in a group atomic size increases now we talk about metallic character it is the tendency of an element to lose electrons you know no that metals can easily lose electrons and non metals will accept electrons so metals are present on the left hand side and non metals are present on the right hand side so in a period when moving from left to right in a period metallic character decreases because tendency to lose electron decreases due to increase in nuclear charge when you will move you will be moving in a period what will happen metallic character will decrease metallic character will decrease because the elements cannot lose electron their tendency to lose electron decreases but in a group when you move from top to bottom in a group metallic character will increase when you move from top to bottom in a in a group the metallic character will increase that time because atomic uh, because atomic size and tendency to lose electron increases atomic size also increases down a group and their tendency to lose electron will also increase so when we move from top to bottom in a group the metallic character will increase now let's talk about the non metallic character 
non metals are present on the right side on the, of the periodic table and the non metals they have the property to gain electron so it is the tendency of an atom to gain electron non metals are present on the right hand side of the periodic table that we all know so in a period when we move from left to right the non metallic character increases metallic character decreases but non metallic character increases why because the tendency to gain electron increases due to increase in nuclear charge and in a group when you move from top to bottom non metallic character decreases because of atomic size increases and tendency to gain electron increases okay so see you can see through a flow chart also metallic character in a period it will decrease but in a group the metallic character will increase just opposite trend is there for non metallic character in a period non metallic character increases but it decreases in a group now we will be reading about the chemical reactivity in metals chemical reactivity of metal increases down the group because the tendency to lose electron increases means reactivity of the metals will increase when we move from top to bottom in a group their reactivity will increase because their tendency to lose electron increases right for non metals the chemical reactivity of non metal will decrease down the group because tendency to gain electron decreases okay now we'll let's talk about the electronegativity it is the tendency of an element to attract the shear pair of electrons towards it in a covalently bonded molecule it to electro electronegativity means what attraction of electrons it attracts the shared pair of electron it increases with increase in nuclear charge or decrease in atomic size if the nuclear charge will increase electronegativity will obviously increase and if the atomic size will decrease electronegativity will decrease so along a period what happens along a period atomic electronegativity negativity increases why because atomic size decreases but down a group electronegativity decreases why because atomic size increases nature of oxides metal oxides are basic in nature example na2o mgo they all are basic in nature and non metallic oxides are acidic in nature carbon dioxide nitrogen dioxide they all are they all are acidic in nature along a period the basic character of the oxides of the element decrease while the acidic character increases if you move in a period if i move in a period what will happen the basic character of the oxides of the element will decrease means basic oxides so the basic character of the oxides will decrease and the acidic character will increase basic character will decrease and the acidic character of the oxides will increase along a period but going down in a group what happen order is reversed and the basic character of the oxides will increase and acidic character will decrease okay remember like this uh, suppose um, if i will draw a flow chart for you all you have to remember like this along a period and this is for group and let's take it for acidic acidic oxides so along a period acidic character increases and down a group acidic character decreases if we talk about uh, basic character if we talk about basic character so down a group basic character increases and basic character decreases along a period decreases along a period okay so this was all about the nature of oxides metallic character and non metallic character that i have told you electronegativity Mm, electronegativity for that you have to remember that along a period electronegativity will increase increase and down the, down the group when you move from top to bottom in a group electronegativity will decrease that time so this was all about this chapter periodic classification of elements so in just uh, 30 minutes we have completed this lesson in short we did the revision from this lesson i hope you all have understood if you want to want a detailed explanation you can go to the playlist of class 10 over there you can search this chapter and very soon we are coming up with the new chapter and we will do the revision from the next chapter thank you for watching if it's helpful for you then please 
click on the like button and share with your friends also and if you are new to my channel then do subscribe it and don't forget to click on the bell icon so that whenever i will be uploading a new video you will get the notification for that thank you for watching